and then yeah it just kind of distracts the you were, line a little you were bit watching yourself on youtube and thinking man people can't see my beautiful face because mm -hmm. ever the the mic stand is in the way i know i'm growing the beard back in a little bit michaela's questioning it <laughs> why okay but why is she questioning it for because she doesn't like it or no uh, no she's a fan of it yeah I, just as long as it doesn't go back to being like too squirrely which i mean i had a longer beard before like longer than where yours is at right now sure and i think she just prefers the shorter kept beard but it's not squirrely dan no no too much we're not like quite yet at zz top levels i've no. never been there before but Oof. um yeah with my brother's wedding coming up everyone in his i think in his party is going to have a beard so i just kind of felt inclined to well got to start prepping for it and with beard growth you have to give it a little bit of time you do have to give it a little bit of time i mean like even even me who i have no hair in my head i mean i do have hair you know and it goes but like, yeah mm -hmm. the beard and the beard i mean think that the, the length of it is kind of you know i mean it takes time but this is mm -hmm. this is trimmed up last month yeah and it's already pretty mm -hmm. decently large yeah. as long as it's still like kept up you don't have too many like flyaways or anything like that which i mean both you and i feel as though we have respectable beards. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the the one compliment people pay to me mostly. Oh, yeah. Just physically or just in general? Because... Well, in, in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they're like everything that's else. That personality everything and your else, lovely eyes. <laughs> everything else about you sucks, but uh, no, no one says that. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. Nice. Everybody's very kind. I would hope so. And hello and welcome to the Average Bros Gym podcast for your average host with eerily similar names, Corey and Croy. That's Corey. I'm Croy. We walk you through fitness, health, and life advice, which seeks to meet you where you're at. No polarizing black and white takes. No threatening you. That's a big thing. I will never threaten you. Much. No. Not, you know, maybe with like gains. I'll threaten you with gains. Oh, Yo, that's a good and, uh, <laughs> and then telling you the only way to do things is just genuine advice and good conversation. Mm -hmm. And bam, 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 bam. It's the Olympic time, everybody. That's right. It is the beginning of the 2024 Summer Olympic Games. Up Paris, en France, bien sûr. Mm. De France, Paris. Nice. Yes, that is. It's in Paris. Uh, yeah, which very excited about. But apparently, opening ceremonies. I don't know. Did okay. not. I don't, I don't know. It's all over right now. Yeah. Have you seen this? I saw a brief snippet of it this morning while Megan and I were in bed scrolling through our phones as, as a morning ritual. Mm. I, okay, I mean, no offense if, if the, you take offense to this at all. I apologize. I couldn't give two fucks what the <laughs> opening ceremony for the Olympics looks like. Anybody listening? I, why do we give a shit? I, I don't know. It's the presentation. Nah, and especially yeah. for that, like, that city or that nation that is hosting it. Sure. I think that's where it yeah. becomes a little bit bigger of a deal. Like, you know, the United States was the one to host, like, it's like when you host a party for all your friends, like you want to show off a little bit. So I can see kind of the appeal, especially for the host nation. Mm. Um, but me personally, in terms of a viewer, yeah. um, for another day, it's like, I'm not, I'm not really going to be tuned into it. I want to watch the athletes. I mean, right. You know, and like I saw, I saw people comment on social media and like social media is just like social media. Yeah. And like, I, we've talked about how much I dislike it in a lot of ways and just like people commenting just like dumb nonsensical shit which i guess is just in that social media in a nutshell no um but like there's a lot of good in, so behind social media like obviously like one thousand businesses use it to market like mm -hmm. there's a lot of ideas that i wouldn't have like gained if i hadn't had social media mm -hmm. well we say that but but like yeah, I mean, those comments about the, the, the opening ceremony are just like, oh, typical France. Like, what the <laughs> fuck does that mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm not saying France is the greatest country in the world, but like, that doesn't mean anything. Well, I just saw, like, one, the weather conditions, which you can't control the weather. I mean, but they had a unique presentation where they were bringing the athletes in on boats or something, mm -hmm. is from what I heard. And then there was Celine Dion and Lady Gaga performing. And I don't know. They, it yeah. sounded, I, I mean, on paper, I guess it sounded pretty cool. Again, not having actually viewed it myself yet, I just see all these comments and posts saying that it just did not go nearly as sure. well as maybe what they had hoped. There well, was some good dude like all painted blue, maybe, and I don't know blue what kind of surf. Yeah, blue man group. That, those are pretty cool, but yeah. they did have, definitely did not perform. It might have been better had they did. Yeah, well, so and Meg showed me the video of like Lady Gaga, like uh, welcoming everybody to Paris in French. She said, uh, bonsoir, uh, bonsoir, which means like good evening. 
uh, Bienvenue à Paris, Welcome to Paris. Mm. And everybody was like, were there no French people available for this? And I was kind of <laughs> laughing about it. I was like, that's like, not, a good, not a bad point. She did, um, Gaga did speak French in um, Bad Romance. I don't know if it was like well per se, but she did speak French in that song. So I was like, well, it's not unprecedented for her to do that. But I was also like, yeah, I mean, I guess where are the French people? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, and also in the movie A Star is Born, I believe she does one of the very opening scenes of the entire movie. She's singing in French and it's amazing. I mean, an incredible performance. Her voice is beautiful. Um, but yeah, I guess I can also see yeah. the point. Like, yeah, why, why that would be the thing. <laughs> Um, and then like I saw, I did see one meme that I thought was kind of funny. It was comparing like there's this old, uh, illustration and by illustration, I mean like a painting, <laughs> Jesus, um, of like George Washington, like leading troops, like in, oh, in, yeah. in like the, in like a, in a canoe or, or a boat, a, like a rowboat. And then it showed like LeBron James, LeBron like, James holding yeah. the flag <laughs> yes. go with the team in USA the and the, the, the rain down yeah. on him. Yeah. But I mean, that's a pretty cool presentation. You got LeBron, who is the leader of the U.S., holding like the, you know, American flag through on the unfortunate, the rain. You can't control that. Lady Gaga, I mean, she's a badass person that you'd want to help present. Celine Dion, too, I think, was also pairing with her. So you got Lady Gaga, an incredible performer, actress. Uh, I mean, she's going to be in the new Joker movie, which also looks epic. Celine Dion, I just found out, also struggles with like some muscle uh, thing. It's like uh, muscle stiffness or something. Stiff person syndrome. Have you heard of this? No. Yeah, I, I just not. found out about that too. But anyways, yeah. Stiff it's, person. It's, I, am I, what am I, what am I going to yeah. get when I Google this? Well, I don't know. Think about like, <laughs> one of my coworkers told me, if you, did you ever see the movie Rango? Uh, was that the Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp movie? Johnny Depp movie, lizard, lizard okay. thing. Apparently there's, from what my coworker Cammy tells me, there's a character in that that has this stiff person syndrome yeah F sps it is a thing yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but apparently celine dion suffers from that so i didn't know that hmm, interesting i didn't know that either she's yeah. also canadian that too so, there you go yeah. but i mean the olympic ceremony i saw a video that popped out the other day i can't remember exactly what year it was of the olympic ceremony but you had a gentleman that had a bow and arrow lit and then shot it through the sky into the big uh ceremony bowl i guess or whatever you call it like the gauntlet that had a massive statue and that lit the torch and that was so cool mm. i mean could we maybe recreate that i don't yeah, know that i think that was in barcelona could be right. might be right yeah 92 i believe it was yeah i feel like with the olympics especially now that as i've gotten older i've come to appreciate way more as a kid i mean it was kind of it was so cool but i didn't understand like the magnitude of it yeah, I think you sure. know was that was that kind of similar to your experience? Well, um, I man, I remember watching it actually a lot as a kid because it was just on NBC. So you'd mm. you'd, you'd like you know evening you'd watch like a replay. We didn't know it was a replay because it wasn't like as oh, yeah. like now it's like everything is so fast, right? And there's live streaming and there's like you know if, if someone wins a medal, it's showing right away you know, on, on, on the internet. Seconds, yeah. Mm -hmm. And before That's what we're before it was like you kind of have to like you you would actually tune in to watch the replay yeah. even if, because even like you know if it's the if the events in like china it's like yeah you're not watching it live but like it's, you're getting seen it you're seeing it from some other angle yep um so that was always like good viewing so i remember doing like watching like um gymnastics because gymnastics has always been prime time always impressive um you know you had, they had basketball as well um i remember swimming and track swimming and track so swimming and especially when michael field. phelps was, was when michael phelps was dominating yeah. yep yeah i mean I, why else would i know the name ryan lochte you know what i mean like yeah, because, yeah. that was mm -hmm. a trivia question the other night actually um usain bolt i mean yeah so mm -hmm. it's like when you have these big big stars like you see those a lot and when yeah when swimming was just super popular i think you even recently, Katie Ledecky with her swimming. Her records um, are stupid. Yeah. And so it's like you see, so like I've, I remember like watching that kind of stuff, but it was always kind of like, I do remember every morning like going to like the, my parents had the Star Tribune, which is a local Twin Cities newspaper. Yeah. And I would always go and check the like medal count every morning. Oh, yeah. To see like yeah. you know, what medals we That's had. So. Right. You could see kind of like the bar graph. Yep, mm -hmm. and then like where the U.S. was, or you know, China, you were always competing. But oh, yeah, yeah, you always wanted. Even as a kid, you didn't. I mean, you were just like, no, I want the U.S. to win. Mm -hmm. You know, I was especially. <laughs> it was always, always. And I always had a a weird like moment of realization when any time that a U.S. athlete would finish in second or third, you know, and get the silver or bronze medal, it was just kind of like, oh, they suck. I remember saying that as a kid, like, oh, wow, why didn't you, like, you couldn't have won, you know, like, and then I remember I had a friend that mentioned to me, she was like, 
when in the world are you ever going to be the second best in the world at anything and said it like with that tone and i was like fair point yeah like, that's, a, that's a very fair point because i i was always confused as a kid i'm like they look so happy you know and at that time i was like no wouldn't you want to win and i know that they still do they're in a, a competitive athlete and they train their entire life for that but yeah to come in second or third and just have this yeah. like you know people crying and like so grateful to be in that moment i can't even imagine what that must be like um but yeah when she made that comment i was like okay yeah that's fair put you, put you in your place a little <laughs> yeah. bit mm -hmm. i mean it's it's in stunning feats of physical performance when i think and i think to like even be an olympian in the first place is an amazing achievement yeah. and then and then to win a medal at Let the alone. olympics when you're competing against you know from the top people in the entire world obviously mm -hmm. in that sport um shout out actually in this current olympics first the first uh american medal silver medal in um let me take a look at here i, I did pull it up because oh, i, got I saw it this morning oh yeah absolutely well, so that's where i was confused we had the opening ceremony yesterday but well, there's Paris already events seven hours going, ahead yeah but there's already events that have been Correct. going on like soccer's been going on and rugby's been going right, on yeah so you have these teams that actually start a little bit maybe early i'm wearing my scotland rugby shirt right now so mm -hmm. <laughs> the u.s actually i think the u.s was in the quarterfinals or um round of eight i believe mm. in in rugby sevens and they did lose to ireland today uh, oh. very very close close match so are we done i believe so so oh, shout shit. out to okay. usa rugby but um so boys a bummer yeah um but yeah so um the first u.s medal was won by uh sarah bacon and cassidy cook in the uh synchronized three meter springboard event diving event oh and very popular sarah bacon uh apparently is uh so they won a silver medal Sarah Bacon is um, a five-time national champion diver for the Gophers. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. So Very cool. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. So okay. she uh, and they train. Uh, they uh, the her and her partner Cass. Uh, I think it was Cassidy Cook. They train uh, at the University of Minnesota over here. Or they oh, train wow. in Minnesota with um, Gophers. Um, Gophers coach. So oh. yeah, shout a little Minnesota connection for the first oh. medal of the U.S. Nice. Place. Good touch on yeah. that. Nice catch. Yeah. Uh, with the olympics it's always interesting to kind of tune into some of those obscure sports you know too like you we just named off like the big ones right you mm -hmm. think of like track and gymnastics and then all of a sudden like what was that event that they just won yeah but within those within those categories you have all these smaller ones too yes. right you know you're the 100 meters so you got the like 400 whatever it is mm -hmm. um that's always interesting and i think it gets people like curious about those kind of sports i mean so a lot of olympians at least in in the u.s i think they make a, more of their money off of like you know, um, what should I call it? Uh, like advertising and and kind of like sponsorship, sponsorship deals and, yep. versus actually getting paid for their sport. Because like, if yeah. you're a, you know professional track athlete, like, what do you really like? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's no professional track league, yeah. really. No, um, you're gonna you're it's gonna be the big payday via mm -hmm. like Puma and Nike mm -hmm. and Adidas, and you know that's where again to kind of our point before, like social media can be such a break great influence on that because like otherwise there there's some of these names that you might not otherwise know like back in the day when you're looking up the star tribune you know you don't know unless it's written in the paper who the big names are but now i mean you just figured out who's the track kid right 16 years old or something mm -hmm. he's on the like the uh, relay team you know you just have so much more access to the athletes that are also participating sure. at the event too which is really cool yeah you got the really cool like uh stories that you hear as well and you see that play out more through like that connection piece of it so mm -hmm. well like simone biles yeah simone biles and of course you got uh, suni lee who is from minnesota again competing mm -hmm. she won gold last year from saint paul um in gymnastics so there you go mm -hmm. too so Mm -hmm. Some interesting Minnesota connections. I pulled out more stats. Yeah, I came prepared for this one. Uh, what's another stat that I have? So actually, so fun fact. Um, so I played rugby. Rugby was kind of my sport in college. And um, so rugby, I think the last time I was in the Olympics prior to 2020, because it was in 2020 or whatever the Summer Olympics was. I forget if it was 2021. I with COVID. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what happened mm. with the last Summer Olympics. Um, but prior to that rugby hadn't been in the Olympics since like 1920 or something like that. Mm. And the final winners were, um, or the winners were, uh, the U S team because they, that was the last Olympics. So the U S Olympia, the U S rugby team was like the defending rugby champion for like 80 years <laughs> until, oh, until rugby came back in the Olympics. And of course they didn't win last year. I believe your last Olympic cycle, I believe it was Fiji. Fiji has a great national seven team. Mm. um and then this year who knows we'll see what happens mm. yeah interesting is that would you say the event that you're looking forward to 
potentially watching or invested in most? I haven't really watched any of it and it's been going on, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but okay, so uh, since the 1900 Paris game, so I guess, yeah, Paris, how 104 years later, no, 124 years later. Wow. Crazy. That's like one whole person ago. Holy snap. I mean, that's that's an old ass person too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say two, I'd say for Maybe sure two, one and a yeah. half. Yeah. One and a quarter. Um, so since the 1900 Paris Games, 132 Minnesota born athletes have won a total of 62 medals, including 26 golds. Mm -hmm. So in the last hundred years, you know, there's probably been some dips and dives here and there with wars and things like that going on. But 132 Minnesota born athletes have won uh, medals. So that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I wonder where that would rank overall within the States. Yeah, I mean, probably. I feel like we're probably not high on that list. I would assume you're gonna. I feel for overall population, like I'm sure California yeah. and New York and stuff like that are yeah. pretty much a little higher. But ones. yeah, mm -hmm. Florida. Yeah, but Texas, if I think maybe, but if you think about like um, like I would say Winter Olympics maybe more so because of or bias hockey. Yeah, that, yeah hockey. Yeah, so yeah, you might be. I don't know. That would be interesting. We'd have to well, look isn't that. that one what, what's the movie a miracle um, where it's like that, that? That well, that team. <laughs> you know that one? You ever heard of it? <laughs> have you guys heard of the Miracle on Ice? The 1980 Olympic is 1980, right? When they beat the USSR and the. Oh, that you test me. Did they lose in the final in that? I have no idea. Didn't they lose to like I'm, Finland? I'm such or a bad Minnesotan in that in that regard. They're not a bad. I do Minnesota not know shit sure about hockey. Hold on. Um, Murph is going crazy because Megan's leaving to go. Mama bear. Um, she, yeah, she's going to go through some groceries. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, it was played between. So, Miracle on Ice played between the hosting US. We won that. Yeah, it was in Lake Placid. Well, so we beat Soviet Union. Hi, buddy. But that was like, I don't think that was even the final. Oh, was it? Everybody, every, some people listening to this are like, oh my God, Croy, I can't believe it. right now. But no, like, hey, I guys. feel like we won. There's no way it would be that popular if that was just for like a conference championship or whatever it would. The well, it was like equivalent of that would be in the Olympics. No, they so. Oh, in 1980, the medal round was a round robin and not a single elimination. So. Under Olympic rules at the time, this is all from Wikipedia. <laughs> So under Olympic rules at the time, the group game with Sweden was counted along with the medal round games versus the Soviet Union and Finland. It was mathematically possible for the United States to finish anywhere from first to fourth, needing to defeat Finland to secure the gold medal. Team USA, blah, 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 blah. Oh, they beat Finland. But... Um... Oh, no. Okay. They still won the gold medal. They just they had to beat Finland to do it. Never mind. Okay, cool. Yes, they still won the gold. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry for that brief interlude of, of trying to figure out what happened to the 1980 <laughs> men's Olympic ice hockey team. <laughs> but there we go. Now we found it out. Well, it would definitely be one of the most iconic moments in American Olympic history. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What, what was, what's an iconic moment for you and your Olympic watching or viewing mm, or participating history? Because you're, yeah. First two that come to mind immediately would be the Michael Phelps, like fingertip reach out win. Mm. Uh, and whatever I want to say, it was me. It was, he was doing the butterfly stroke. I know that. I don't know if it was part of a relay. No, it was, I think it was a part of a relay, maybe. It was when he went on that just magical run in whatever year where he won like eight out of eight gold medals every event in either he or the team that he participated with won and just had never been done before he's the greatest you could argue greatest olympian american olympian um ever for sure and yeah there was just that one iconic image that i remember seeing doing that last big pull so he just finishes the stroke of the butterfly and his fingertips outstretch that of his competitor in the lane right next to him by i think it was one tenth or one 100th or one one thousandth of a second however that narrow of a margin um that was the first one that came to mind and then probably just watching usain bolt just dominate mm. out on the track and be like wow he just looks in such a fast in the fastest sport in the fastest event um that you can participate in being the 100 meter dash and just looking like he is light years ahead of the fastest humans on this planet was just incredibly impressive it's like watching simone biles and katie ledecky how they are just light years ahead of everybody else in that respective sport um that i think always just kind of resonated with me and i was a little bit more drawn to for sure i remember watching like in high school when you had like the women's gymnastics team and you had like 
Sean Johnson and and throughout mm. like the two thousands with like Alicia Sacramoni and people like that. Forget those names, I... <laughs> yeah, it's like and you remember it, like oh yeah, sure, Dang. I remember that. Yeah, I remember watching that quite a bit. So I remember watching that in high school. So those moments stood out to me as far as like the Summer Olympics went. Um, and then of course you had kind the of Winter like, Olympics, I guess, would also be different. Yeah, that would be yeah. different. Yeah, the winter, winter Olympics was interesting. I always loved um, the the moguls on like skis, where it's like they're like those, those they're going down yeah. the hill and they're just like hopping <laughs> back and forth. I was like, I love watching this. I don't know why. Terrifyingly fast. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was always fun to watch. Like yeah, like half pipe with. The, I feel those were epic. I feel like even though I didn't do any like really winter sports, like I wasn't a big snowboarder, didn't ski Same. really. I really I barely skate, and I'm I'm a oh. terrible Minnesotan. And my dad's family is French Canadian, so I'm even a worse fucking French Canadian. <laughs> um. But like I didn't really. Yeah, we didn't do a lot of the winter sports stuff, and nope. so. But I really enjoyed watching it for whatever yes. reason. Mm-hmm. It was really cool, anyways. Yeah, no snowboarding, skiing, any half pipe, quarter pipe, moguls always looked epic. Uh, I think that long jump event that they do oh, on sure. the skis that yeah. always looked really cool. Um, oddly enough, like the event where they do cross country skiing, but then they have a rifle strapped to their back. Oh, and yeah, have to, like lay down prone on your belly, and probably I think also biathlon, several other different biathlon, shooting. Biathlon, yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. And then like probably several other like shooting positions where you, you know, maybe on, on a knee or whatever that it would be. And then you're having to shoot at a target however long away. Anytime that you miss, you'd maybe do a penalty lap or whatever the yeah. event is. I thought that was fascinating. Well, and I always like, uh, so biathlon, little somewhat of a small history lesson because I'm not, I don't have the full history with me, but it was, um, I think it was, it was, started so it's called biathlon and it was kind of like inspired or started by um like swiss i believe swiss riflemen in world war ii um because essentially they had to like you know they were defending certain areas of like swiss mountains and they would literally had rifles and skis and like that's Mm -hmm. how they did it and that's how they trailed across these these areas and so that's kind of how it this the sport came to be afterwards oh interesting kind of cool had mad respect for that when we just last week and i was down back home in my hometown winona for my brother's bachelor party and for the main kind of event i guess you you'll say of our bachelor weekend was taking everyone out to go uh paintballing and this was like like some legit paintball back in the woods it was a family owned and operated operation for about a good 28 years it was my brother uh one of his buddies jordan and myself two of the other guys bitched out last minute they probably was the for the best though i don't know if they would have been able to hang just three of you guys <laughs> just three of us but we meet up with another group of about wow. 6 to 8 that were already there at that same time. They were all like in their 20s, also there for a bachelor party. So we think that it's going to be like a group of like 10 to 12 of us there and be like, oh, this is going to be rad. Fast forward about five minutes after we had all gotten there, we see some dust getting kicked up on the dirt trail that we all just came in on. And we're like, oh, must be some other players that are, you know, joining our party right now. This will be, this will be cool. Professional paintball team. No, I was. Dude. Really? It it, Fucking 10 to 12 guys. Men, I should say pop out of their trucks de- decked out head to toe camo they all have their own mask all have their own paint bun. like like we just met the weekend warriors one dude was wearing a fucking sniper rifle ghillie suit like one of those you lie down in the grass and if he doesn't move you don't see him and we're just sitting there like what did, why did the dream team just have we, to show we up we try that in the in the industry we call those tryhards is what oh, we call those yeah oh they were so but it turned out to be just an awesome day and i mean when we got into like some of those courses because it was us and the other bachelor party versus this group of like 10 to 12 uh we ended up winning one of the matches which was really fun and they had a multiple different courses all throughout and i like to think i'm a pretty in shape guy but i got up on some of these uh, barricades like running up behind them and your brain is just running through like fight or flight mode like it doesn't recognize that necessarily you're in a mortal situation where you could die but the paintball's flying past your head and you're trying to duck into cover and i mean i got up behind some of those uh barricades and i'm sitting there with my heart rate at like 200 beats per minute i had to stop like i could not move i'm like i have to fucking just <sighs> barely could you know make it out of there um so thinking about an event like the biathlon they're doing that cross-country skiing then have to lie down try to get their heart rate down and then shoot at this target you know however far away i mean it's just like the different levels of being an athlete and how that is 
then shown on this grand stage at the Olympics is so cool. You know, an event like that, how you can take that um, kind of correlation between your daily activities, or if you've ever gone paintball and you've experienced that, you have a newfound appreciation for them what you're seeing on the screen. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting, I, and I I love seeing those sports that you typically wouldn't like associate with, like, oh yeah, like I love watching this because you don't watch this. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. when else are you watching biathlon? Yeah. And when else are you watching, you know, like even things like handball, like there's probably handball leagues on like ESPN 8, the Ocho. Mm. But, you know, when <laughs> when are you watching handball? France is actually pretty good at handball, fun fact. Like in, in mm-hmm. France, like handball is actually kind of a bigger sport. Mm. Um, it's interesting. Sporting culture in other, in, in, in other societies is very interesting. I remember yeah. when, I was in, when I was in France and like it is don't have like, you know they have their their they have their French league league ah which is league one <laughs> for mm-hmm. their soccer, um, but other than that, like they don't have like these. This sport almost feels more like like organic in nature. Mm. Um, you know they don't have these massive professional leagues like the NBA and the okay. NFL. Okay, how, like how you're saying like how the business and the organization yeah, build the up around not, it? And, yes, yeah. um, it's not like this kind of insatiable marketing machine that mm-hmm. a lot of our like like when, when so when we were my friend Marcus and I were in Paris two years ago, at um, uh, we were watching a um, a rugby match between France and Italy, and it was the first rugby match of the Six Nations. So the Six Nations tournament is a year is a tournament that's done every single year, and um, it's between um, like rugby or <laughs> rugby. It's between France, Italy, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England, um, and then so they play like round robin throughout the course of like a couple of months. And but so they played at this place uh, out just outside of Paris, kind of like a sub- suburb of Paris. And it was like, there's, there's no like concessions in the, in the stadium. There's no like really no advertising. There's no uh, like retail really. Mm-hmm. And there's like barely a, like the bathrooms are all like outside of the stadium. Mm-hmm. Like so, and so is all the retails. Like there's like two shops maybe, and they're outside of the stadium. And it's not like hard to get to. It's like you kind of just walk outside. It's, it's very quick access. Mm-hmm. But it just it struck me as very interesting. I'm like, you know, in the U.S., our stadiums are full of advertising, are full oh, of yeah. marketing, are full of con- like stands. Like you'll go to any like even like high school stadiums have like concession stands. Even you know what have you have like you know if you look at the outfield of a baseball game. And especially like a town ball league or like a minor league team or whatever, there's just there's ads all around. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it just struck me as different. And so it's like what's kind of intriguing is is you'll see in the in the Olympics, you'll see like, wow, wow, Kyrgyzstan is really good at this. You know, I mean like Kyrgyzstan's no. won four medals and they're all from this event. And so it's interesting just kind of seeing which country or what country kind of prioritizes what. And um, I don't know, it's kind of intriguing to kind of watch and, and look from. So I always mm-hmm. love the aspect to it where it's like you get to see sport. We also could see like some cultures merge and things like that. Well, and then elements of like consumerism, like why are some of those sports a little bit of a higher profile? You know, is it due to just um, access? Like, OK, a lot of nations can play soccer. You know, but then you have the element aspect to it, like, okay, further up north, we might be dominating in all of like the winter Olympic type of sports versus like South Sudan. You know, it's like the whole premise of cool runnings. You got the Jamaican bobsled team, like that's hilarious. You know, when you (laughs) South Sudan, one of the more most recent countries to be uh to emerge in existence, fun Mm -hmm. fact. Oh. Yeah. from england recently in the last like 20 years they, they almost beat our u.s uh, they, they, men's basketball team that was a trivia question uh <laughs> on wednesday for trivia and the only reason i got it is because i was like ah, i feel like they almost beat the u.s yeah. like, which is insanely impressive you know yeah. as to whether or not you know the u.s was kind of ready for ready for that i mean we have a squad right now that you could have the entire bench that is built to be able to win the gold medal so yeah. that was it was just kind of impressive which is like, interesting wow. to think about too because you look at a sport like basketball and how how it has popped off oh, across the growing. world even in the last 20 years mm-hmm. i mean you think of like the dream team like what 92 whatever it was yep. and i think of the the athens olympics in 2004 and i think the u.s got like bronze like they did really poorly in that in that year i think some of the nba players like didn't actually go or something it was but i remember carmelo anthony was yeah. was a player there too i'm gonna look mm-hmm. this up and it was kind of disappointing because then the next year i think it was like all right we're gonna have all hands on deck for this thing and come out and annihilate so it's either like something where not all of the top end players went or we sent more of the college kids but 
either way, the growth of the sport has been extremely popular. Yeah. Like that dream team, I think they only had to play eight or nine. I could be mistaken here exactly on the number, but NBA players throughout the tournament this year, the uh, U.S. men's basketball team will have to face, I think it was like 60 to 70 NBA players. And then so you see the growth in other nations and you're like, that's awesome to see. So in 2004, the Team USA lost its opening game to Puerto Rico by 19 points. <laughs> and uh, their roster, man, uh, their roster, AI, okay. Stefan Marbury, Dwayne but, Wade, but, okay. Carlos Boozer, Carmelo, LeBron was on that squad, Emeka Okafor, Sean Marion, Amari Stoudemire, Tim Duncan, Lamar Odom, Richard. Y'all should not be losing fucking by... Still, I, you I, should I, not I'm, be I'm losing any you. games. We, shouldn't, we still shouldn't have lost that. <laughs> we I should would. not be losing to no, Puerto you, Rico by 19. You said some big names in there, but if you went on like this team now, it's like you have every player on that squad is arguably a Hall of yeah. Famer. And then you go to that team there. You got some obscure names, you know, that are thrown in. Like the Dream Team, iconically had Christian Leitner. You know, didn't go on to do anything, was a great college basketball player, but never amounted to anything substantial within the NBA. This team right now, the U.S. men's team, the roster top to bottom, yeah. you can look across and be like, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, straight up and down. And that's kind of also a cool Yeah, but it's like it's the growth of the game here, right? Especially like the Eastern European nations, Slovakia, okay. Serbia, like who, like Lithuania. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and those guys were in, were in the league earlier on. You know, yeah. you're talking like Vlade Divac and stuff like that, but... It's it's crazy to kind of see that growth, and even in, in countries like France, I mean, like the number one draft pick was from France. Yeah, Alex Sar, I believe, Alexandre Sar was from France. He might have been number one or number two. No, because Wemby was number. Oh no, this, you're saying this, this, year, oh, yeah. this most recent draft. But yeah. there you go, Wemby again. He's oh, getting four France, more, right? Mm -hmm. Wemby Nyama. Um, and so it's like you see, like, and like Gobert, of course, is French. So it's like you yes. see kind of like these other countries, even even Western European nations now too. Well, and then last, like Germany, think, Spain with Ricky Rubio, like yeah. oh, like all the um, the, what should we call it? The brothers, the Gasol brothers, like back in the day in the early two thousands, mid two thousands, like Spain was really really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yep. So man, you see, yeah. Well, the last several NBA MVPs have been also foreign born. You have like you know, uh, Luka Doncic. You have uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. You have. Uh, Nikola Jokic, you know, so again, mm -hmm. the top players in our league, you, I mean, you could say our league, yeah, the NBA, um, are foreign born. And it's cool to see that growth. And now with sport, generally, you're consuming that just like to your nation more often yeah. than not, like at the NBA, the NFL, the MLB, like those are the big dominant yeah. sports. Even, I mean, UFC, you start getting a little bit, I don't know where the overall hierarchy is of like viewership. I'm assuming tennis and golf are probably up there, but you're watching a lot of American born players all the way throughout. And it's cool on the Olympics. Like, wow, what is this nation that I, I just never heard about? And they got a great athlete. Like, look at that. Yeah, dude, they mm -hmm. got to start doing. So the WNBA for a long time has done um, their all-star game as like Team USA versus like Team WNBA. Oh, there that and oh like, that's another thing. The NBA has to do that because the East, the East, and I this is kind of a man, it's kind of a tangent, but not really. But the East West format of the All Star Game for the for the NBA, like it's kind of just it's kind of bearded out. Like no one really gives a shit anymore. You know, no, the games are like two hundred points to like two to like one hundred eighty. It's like it's ridiculous. And they're just playing because they don't want to get injured. And I get that exactly. But like they got to start doing a little like I think if it was a Team USA versus like Team NBA, like just guys from across the the Ooh. globe, I think that would be a little bit more hype. To be honest, I feel like they, oh, way more yeah, hype. Yeah. I feel like people would be trying to win on that. So that would be I would mm -hmm. love that. That would be cool. Um, yeah, because um. Team WNBA beat Team USA. And well, uh, that was Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Yeah, and there's and they a, are a curry that league up right now. Hold up, though, but there is there's this woman that went the fuck off. She scored like 34 points. Mm. Um, Wait, on the for in the in the uh, All Star game. Um, oh, okay, on yeah, the yeah. WNBA squad. Or yeah. I, I did see that though, like uh, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese uh, taking it to the USA USA squad. Which is cool to see that again, that even that growth within that sport. Arike Ogun Ogun Boale. <clears throat> Sorry, Ogun Boale. Arike Ogun Boale. Mm. Uh, she went off. She was mm. from. She's from Notre Dame. She hit two. She's, I think, in oh man, I think in the year uh, that she was uh, around in Notre Dame, I think she hit like two back to back game winners, to, like win the title or something like that, like. From, she was on the Notre Dame squad? Yeah, yeah. Not like now, but like she was in college. She played for Notre Dame. Well, that would have been for, what, the like Notre Dame now. face. And like, I don't, I don't know. I think in college basketball, the teams that 
for schools that come to mind right away are like South Carolina, uh, South Island, Carolina, Caitlin Tennessee, Clark. back in the day, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. Um, of course, well, good. Iowa the last couple of years, yeah, UConn, UConn dominated, yeah, um, Connecticut. Was that yeah, men's? UConn for sure? No, oh, UConn, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, men, yeah. men and women no. are both great. They, no, I yeah. mean, they both won. The, they both won the title a couple of years ago. Like yes. men and women both won the title at the same time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, I mean, you've got the other squads that look really good. I mean, you've got like Louisville that does really well typically. LSU, of course, the Angel Reese and kind of the rest. Yep. They like yeah, they yeah. have they had their their run as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, you've got those teams. So I don't remember exactly who they were playing against, but I remember hearing that she had back to back like game winners. Like mm-hmm. I think when Notre Dame won the title. Mm-hmm. I believe they won the title. Oh, I don't want to be wrong. Anyways, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I apologize. But yeah, yeah so she went off for like 34 points. Um, so it's like, it's just kind of fun watching. Like, I think that's a better format. Mm-hmm. To be honest, those all-star games. So. Oh, yeah, I would completely agree. And even just with the another aspect of the Olympics that I really enjoy is that when you get selected, like the multi-year process that that takes to get that mm-hmm. stage ready to host all of those athletes, like the athlete village that they all like live in, like everything that goes into the production of that is just absolutely incredible. What, so for you, we can ask two questions. Oh boy, two only questions. two? Well, part of it, mm. two. Two and a half. So what Olympic sport, summer Olympic sport? I'm gonna stop looking at Specifically summer Olympics? Uh, yeah, let's go for summer Olympics right now okay. because, of, because of obvious reasons. Because Obvious it's reasons, because of summer. Dude, it's feel, it fucking feels like summer today, man. Yeah, it's 90 shit. and a hot. So Croatia's handball comeback. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Front page news. <laughs> so if we're thinking about like sports in the Summer Olympics, which one do you think you'd want to compete in? Uh just simply want to compete in, not necessarily perform the best in. Correct. Okay. Um, so like give, I, can you give me a list though? Yeah. Because the, the differentiating between summer and winter every now and again. Because I think like I swam in high school. But it was during winter, but swimming is, is it summer and an Olympic, a winter sport? Uh, like just give me the rundown. Like Olympics, what? it's only summer, summer it's Olympics. only summer, yeah. okay. See, like that, for instance, I would think like, oh, so, like swimming is a winter sport. Okay, so let me give you up. like, man. So uh, the ones that are going on right now, you have gymnastics, that's going to be a big one, track. Um, so you've got, so I'm, I'm going to read off a list yeah, just, of yeah, Olympic just, sports. Yes, yeah, so rattle them off. So you've got artistic gymnastics, badminton basketball beat mm. volleyball boxing canoe slalom mm. diving equestrian fencing handball hockey they have hockey see, what, what i'm see it see there's some in there no that you're like, they don't i don't think they have hockey though what the fuck is yeah. this it's, I don't, is this off of wikipedia this must mm. not be it must be like it could be field <laughs> oh it's probably field hockey Ooh. Field okay hockey. i'll give you That's that what it is all right so field hockey um judo Nope. Road cycling, rowing, rugby sevens, um, bronze medal match. Australia is beating South Africa right now. France and Fiji are in the gold medal match. Oh my God, France mm. could win. Although Fiji, Fiji could win back to back, which would be kind of cool. Um, but it would be cool for France to win because they're hosting. Um, okay, so rugby sevens, shooting, pistol, rifle, soccer, surfing. Nope. Uh, s- swimming. Table tennis, table tennis. Dude, ta- table yeah, tennis, yeah, yeah. I fuck with hard. Tennis, volleyball, water polo. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so those are just some of okay. them. And I think within and then, that, there's probably more. Yeah, multiple different breakdowns But like, of that. just from what I said. Yeah, I mean, it would be a hard not to want to say track. I would get dusted out there. Like, mm-hmm. uh, is weightlifting an Olympic sport? Yeah, it is, yes. Yeah, well, I, believe I mean, still I is, would unless... hope so because Olympic weightlifting. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they were they were thinking about banning it for a while because of yeah, people just testing positive right. for, for drugs. But Some dumb shit. Yeah. Whatever. Let them I, choose. <laughs> <laughs> there is a point to be made, honestly. I mean, there's there's a definitely like a moral, but also like a agreed. Where it's it's like I mean, there is there's this idea of like, hey, these people are doing it anyway. Right. Hey, like, you know. And also, like, I don't know. Anyways, or, like, yeah, or separate divisions, like you yeah, know, have yeah, a test, natural, or not natural, whatever it is, you know, and just see what the actual utmost potential is of human capacity. And if, like, if you let them take yeah. uh, endogenous, like, oh, hormones or TRT, if you're doing whatever steroids, like, and I'm not, know, I'm not a, to the gills. Like, I'm not a guy that's like, oh yeah, like I want to see the best possible thing. Because I don't give a well, fuck, but I also just think like people are like like half the field is probably doing it anyway, and yeah. then it's like you're gonna like and then it, and then you introduce this idea of like okay, well, who's testing them? Are they popping certain people and not popping others? Right. Like who gets tested more than not? Yeah, yeah. it's just like 
it's, but you never really know. But that's just like a thought experiment. Let's take gymnastics or track. Okay. Something that everyone, well, maybe not. Let, let's just stick with track because everyone can resonate with this one. Everyone's walked, ran, whatever. But you take the um, 100 meter dash. We'll just use that as an example. Wouldn't it be the same idea as I think it would be awesome to be able to watch the very first heat is a bunch of just average Joes and Janes that line up on the starting line and crack those. And then you just see this is the average group, you know, of the the world, right? Have them run their first the heat. non-juicers. Yeah, the non-juicers. Then have all the tested Olympic athletes, the ones that are already right now going to be competing, then watch them go. And then, I don't know, it'd be fun to just be able to compare them to then the non-tested group and see how much of a gap maybe that it does or maybe does not create. It would just be interesting. Maybe if you're like doing like a study, but if it's for the Olympics where it's supposed to be like a competition and people are supposed to have, it's supposed to be a fair competition, mm -hmm. theoretically, you wouldn't want to do that for us. Yeah, um, yes. Mm -hmm. Because like then you have to think about like the, you know, the the moral standpoint of like, okay, well, are we... You know, are we are we incentivizing shortening your lifespan or incentivizing, you know, really bad side effects so that you can win? And the thing is, is people are going to do that on their own. But I would say, like, if they're going to choose to do that, like, I don't know, like, like people will make that choice a lot of the times when you're talking about, you know, you know, you know it, the difference between, you know, two seconds on your time could be the difference between you making a team and making exponentially more money and you not making a team and, and not getting that. Or are you talking in a sport like the 100 meter sprint and that two seconds is the difference between you being an Olympic level gold medalist and you just being like a halfway decent, you know, college athlete mm -hmm. or something, you know what right. I mean? Like the gap can be that small. Yeah. Where you're like, Oh, two seconds. But in a sport like track or in a sport like swimming, like that's a eternity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, definitely a thought but right. it's um but so you you say so you <laughs> say you say track really you're not gonna choose like boxing you're not gonna choose like judo get, no, no way judo? i want to keep my consciousness uh-uh no judo also just get whipped around on a mat i'll i'll, I'll fuck with table tennis that'd be fun because i yeah. think i'm halfway decent and then i don't get hurt you get fucking worked by those kids but you oh yeah they would doing it, but yeah. i would have fun doing it you know i think yeah track just to see how fast those athletes are how impressive that feat of performance is a basketball i'm gonna get dusted i'm not even gonna attempt it and there's Corey yeah. mcdonald from the u.s or in the back he's 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 barely off the blocks and everybody else is about halfway through the court well, I, I, he's I like, struggling he's popping hamstring <laughs> he's limping out on the sidelines <laughs> they would be like how, how much of a head start would i need to be given to even make it a photo finish you know do i need to start like a good like 25 meters already down yeah, yeah I mean, 100 you got, meter dash. You, you I gotta have like, at least a quarter head start, probably even more. Three quarters of the way down. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, it, it would just be cool to be able to witness that or yeah. even experience it, let alone. But otherwise, I think, uh, yeah, like table tennis. I think bobsledding would be rad. That would be cool because again, I don't really have to do too much. I mean, you just drive off the line, hop in the thing, and then I just want to be the guy in back that is just along for the ride. Like mm. bobsledding, that would be probably it's an awesome because one. like we probably we're probably saying these things, and there's also probably like so much more that goes into these. Oh, he, oh one thousand. You know what I mean? Cool. Um, yeah, that yeah. would probably be mine. Okay, you? Um, I would say. I mean, of course, easy for me to say sevens rugby. You want to go? You would want to do that. I Going think, up against I, would, those I think that is the, the only sport that I have played in like this list of things that I would have been somewhat. Well, the thing is, is I didn't play it at a high level. Like, it's not like I'm playing at like a high level. Like it's not like I was like really good at yeah. rugby sevens, but like, let's say I was, let, let's say this is, this is saying that you're like training for it. But, like which sport, like if you were like trained, could you want to be able to do? Okay. So you're not saying like right now where I'm physically Oh, like just, which one would you want to compete in? You know what I mean? Okay, so I don't have to go against them because then that kind of changes things. Because if I'm signing up for rugby right now, they're gonna fold my ass up like a lawn chair. Right. You know, like I'm not I'm not going into that. But if it, if I could compete on the highest level of that sport, right? That's a whole different question. Then um, I do rugby. Rugby is rugby sevens rugby. is like one of the hardest sports I've ever done in my life. So yeah. if you don't know what rugby sevens is, um, so typical uh, rugby is like what call like rugby union or just rugby um so think about you're on this big field that's a little bit bigger i believe than a football field but it's around the same size and you have 15 players per side rugby seven rugby is a lot like um a lot of it is played with like it's it's a, a lot of it is played by like field position right you want to be in a certain field position it's easier like if you if you commit a penalty in your in your area let's say like you know 
let's say in football, this is a good example. So like if the Vikings are playing the Packers and the, pa- and the Vikings are inside the Packers red zone, right? The Packers commit a penalty in that. The Vikings can just choose to kick it for three points. Like mm-hmm. they choose. That's kind of what rugby is. Now, touchdowns or, or points in rugby typically a little harder to come by. So like a three-point penalty kick is like a pretty good option depending, mm. right? Um, because you could always give the ball away. And then you're like, oh, fuck, I have no points now. Well, I could have gotten three. Yep. So like, so typical rugby is played. It's kind of like two walls moving against each other with like breaks here and there for tries. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's exciting, but it's, it's kind of more of like a kind of like, it's kind of more of a field position game. Mm-hmm. Rugby sevens is the exact same field with seven people, half of the people on the team. Mm. So you can imagine the open space that, yeah. Um, you know, imagine like, you know, f- ra- imagine football with five players on each team. <laughs> yeah. It's basically like backyard, you know what I mean? Um, to like cut the p- players in half. Yep. So rugby sevens is, is, is much more like just sprinting. It's a lot of it is like, mm. you got, I mean, you have to, you have to be able to tackle because there's less people. Like yep. if you miss a tackle, that's probably a try. There's yep. probably another team scoring. If you miss one tackle, so there's a lot more pressure in that. Um, but you also have more space, more wide open space for yourself too. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's set, rugby sevens is seven players aside, seven minute halves, because like you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> you oh need, god. Yeah. And it's like a you know what I mean. Incredible so, athletes on that field oh, yeah. too. Like their VO two, I would be interested in like testing that, see like what their overall aerobic capacity yeah. is, you know. And then you got to handle the physicality of mm-hmm. that sport as well. Like you're basically getting jacked up, just like you see on the. Um, football screen on Sundays, but they're not wearing helmets and they're not wearing shoulder pads. Like, yeah, you know, you, you tackled, you tackled differently, differently but I mean, but, you're still getting dinged up yeah, automatically. You pretty still good. get concussion, oh, you still God, get everything. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, so you can go so, rugby. Yeah, I'd, I'd go rugby. I, I just rugby is also just fun, man. Yeah. Sevens is sevens rugby as tiring as it is. It's so fucking mm-hmm. fun to play. I, th- I think if that's the case that I am performing at that elite level as well, then I would go with weightlifting. Sure, but the idea that you train for four years and for some of these people like the 100 meter sprint it's like oh yeah your entire olympic uh event experience for an elite level sprinter is you're training four years for 10 seconds or an olympic weightlifting i'm training four years to get six attempts at a clean and jerk and a snatch and that is it and so i mean the high stakes of that versus like in a match like you know basketball or you get something maybe like rugby you get that time you get like the one game but it's just crazy to think of like oh the precision aspect of it as well that i find uh kind of fascinating and endearing too sure you know? but yeah yeah i love that no I'd, yeah I'd do rugby gymnastics too would be also pretty happy gymnastic that is some of the Horrifying. craziest i mean when you get some of those athletes like doing an iron cross or they're running full sprint at the what is it? The uh, not the pommel horse. The thing that they launch off of is it just vault. Yeah, vault. Like you're full on sprinting at an inanimate object. That if you like, you trip, you could just get ribbed. You know, just full on speared like Goldberg back in the day. That's a WWE reference for anybody who doesn't know. And if you don't know Goldberg, you just go. <laughs> go um, or like the pommel horse. You get like you know the men's doing the iron crosses. The women on the uneven bars. Like I think when you see an athlete like Simone Biles, who apparently just registered to do her own trick again, like a new uh, move that no one has ever done. And if she lands it, that's yet another move that no one has completed. That is in the name of her. You see an athlete that's sprinting full speed, launches themselves through the air. The twists, the turns, the coordination, like power. Yeah. Um, you know, for that is just wow. Just to be able to stick it on that stage. And then hear that crowd going nuts, just roaring. Yeah, probably gymnastics, weightlifting. Those would be so cool. Any sport. Let's be honest. If you're an Olympian, any yeah, fucking pretty cool. sport is cool. Biathlon yeah. sounds cool too. I mean, that's a winter sport. But uh, yeah, yeah. I was looking for biathlon, and I was like, oh wait, that's winter. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that'd be cool too. Like fucking, I don't know. I I actually want to get into that. So this winter, if you we find a biathlon spot, do it because they they have them around. You know what I mean? Mm, biathlon. So we're gonna start working on your. Show. Oh, so we could start like you know maybe cross training by going and taking you out on paintball uh no no oh, no you'd love it if it involves the risk of me feeling pain then no do i no. get domed right in the head <laughs> yeah no that's not, that's not for me although i felt like i was like arnold schwarzenegger in the movie predator while i was out there prying yeah, like, you do the job oh, nah, come on do it you're the one ugly motherfucker <laughs> what the fuck are you yeah, whatever that is. But you're seriously like army crawling on all fours. You know, yeah. I'm sliding on my back through a ravine. Fucking. Bah, 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 bah. 
Yeah. Out, outdoors is the way to go. I've, I've had done in ball, indoor paintball and indoor paintball sucks. No, it's kind of like laser tag. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. And I still yeah. enjoy laser tag, but we went to like a pretty big space at the Mall of America. And we talked about this in like episode like 20 or something. I don't know. Whatever, whatever that Roll was. Back. Yeah, whatever that episode <laughs> was. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's that's our conversation on the Summer Olympics. Uh, I have no predictions whatsoever. Uh, Corey, any predictions for the Summer Olympics? Give me, yeah. give me your craziest prediction. Well, it's not crazy. It's just Katie Ledecky just being able to watch greatness on that stage. Go see her dominate in the uh swim events it's basically like watching michael phelps it's it's the exact same thing it's it's almost, it's her own thing she has so many records that it just annihilates the field uh to be able to watch that the u.s men's basketball team you're watching one of the greatest um compilation of players in nba history and on the olympic stage you get simone biles who is going for what might be her last uh olympics you know because i think she's getting a little bit up there in terms of age as it relates to gymnastics being sure. a little bit of a more youthful sport, um, you know, and performing a new trick. I mean, there's so much to look forward to. And again, that's just my uh, view of the situation. You know, you have a bunch of other nations that are performing in just various different sports that you're maybe not necessarily exposed to. There's so much great things to be able to look from this. You watch the greatest athletes perform on the biggest stage. What could you not be excited about for that? You know, just what is elite level human performance when, you know, you look around and state of state of the world today, you're like, oh, okay, wow. Like, look at what the human body is actually capable of. I think to watch it on that stage is just going to be awe inspiring. I love it. Mm -hmm. You? Um, I'm trying to look at some schedules here. Mm. Yeah, I should probably look at that because I know they just fired them up. But I think over the week after the run we did this morning, they had uh, some of the men's gymnastics events that were going on. They were doing the um, the vault see some dude just full sprint launch himself off do two three different flips or turns and sticks it mm. i'm trying to think okay um mm. I'm trying to think of a good prediction a good prediction i think i think that the dutch women's field hockey team will cool. take home the silver medal mm. Yeah, don't have enough faith or belief in them to take gold, huh? No, no. no. <laughs> They'll take home the silver. That's my prediction. Dutch mm. women's field hockey taking the silver medal. Mm. I will say in beach volleyball. All of our Dutch listeners are pissed right now. Yeah, they're so mad. Um, I apologize. Uh, Dankia, which means thank you in Dutch. So mm. thanks oh, for thanks just, for thanks just, for listening poured it on <laughs> um and i think in beach volleyball in 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 men's beach volleyball we're gonna see a big winner out of um south africa mm. south africa beach volleyball men's are gonna win mm. the gold yeah i don't even know if they're competing <laughs> Should have fact checked that. Those are two. Those are my two predictions. We'll see what happens. Um, for more Summer Olympics coverage, don't follow us. We're not going to be talking about it yes. again. Probably, uh, we'll probably touch on it a little oh, bit. Yeah, you yeah. know, but but not to the same degree. Mm -hmm. But these are our uh, half-assed predictions <laughs> of not knowing what's going on. So yeah, Katie, Katie Ledecky will win everything. I, I'm gonna say so. Yeah. Perfect. Uh huh. Uh, and so and to win everything. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Perfect. Whatever. And if they're facing, no, they're not facing each other. They're in different sports. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, uh, any last thoughts, Corey? Besides the last thoughts you just had, uh, I would say if you've never seen the Olympics, which I mean, how have you not seen the Olympics or at least some highlights? Just randomly on this, you know, Saturday night or Sunday over the course of however many weeks that these go on to, uh, how long does it actually go for? You know, off the top of your head. I should know this. I don't. Two months. Two months. Two months. Yeah, that's a way month. too far. A month. One month. Yeah. One month. You know, I mean, you're, it's going to be on at some point in time. You're going to be out at, out to eat. Someone's going to have it on the TV. Just like tune in a little bit and just like watch what a human person can do on display. Again, on the largest stage, the variance that you have across different sports. It, it's either way. It's just going to be fascinating. Just dial in, put your phone down for a second, just like really tune into whatever that sport is and just appreciate kind of what you are seeing and what's capable. You know, I think that would be a yeah, just good little thing to kind of focus in on. Love it. Say. 
Love it. Well, friends, give us a follow on uh, Average Bros Gym Podcast on Instagram. Also, check us out on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Average Bros Gym Podcast. Like, subscribe, all the things. That really helps us out quite a bit. Um, our Patreon is up and live. You can donate $5 a month to help us keep the channel running. Um, yeah, fun stuff. Also, send us an email for any topics you want us to cover, any questions you may have average bros gym podcast at gmail.com we can answer those for you maybe i'll start putting this at the beginning of the segment maybe i'll start doing that mm. but we'll see what happens anyways we'd love to chat with you more about that otherwise y'all have a great rest of your day thanks for listening and you'll hear from us very soon again at some other time and uh...